here at Miauli, Miauli Senshing Railway Station. I'm here with uh, Stephen Krug, who is a long time writer for our magazine and a uh, long time resident of Taiwan. He has, he has written articles for us and also written uh, books. And one book I read recently is called Culinary History of Taipei Beyond Pork and Pon Lai. Uh, the title uses the word Taipei, but really it's a book about all of Taiwan. Yeah. And I really like the book. If you are interested in Taiwanese food and want to know more about food culture and stuff like that, that's a great book. What is the book about? Okay, uh, the book has 10 chapters, so our, our say a little bit about each chapter. So chapter one is about uh, the food available from nature in Taiwan mm -hmm. and uh, what did ancient people in Taiwan eat. So before uh, migrants from the Chinese mainland started coming to Taiwan and growing rice, mm -hmm. what did the indigenous people hunt and gather and farm. And then chapter two is about uh, Taiwanese kitchens mm -hmm. and what you can expect to find in Taiwanese kitchens in the way of uh, equipment and also condiments like soy sauce, rice wine, mm -hmm. things like this. Chapters three and four are about um, certain dishes and recipes which are used in, for example, religious rituals or special occasions like weddings and also some of the iconic typical Taiwanese dishes like uh, rice with um, braised pork and uh, pork cutlets, chicken cutlets and also some of the more famous dishes like uh, Buddha jumps over the wall. Mm -hmm. Then chapter five is about farming and agriculture in Taiwan including uh, Taiwan's amazing fruits Chapter six is about markets, not only uh, so-called wet markets, uh, traditional markets, but also supermarkets, hypermarkets, and also what's becoming important now is people ordering food online. Mm -hmm. And then chapter seven is about famous chefs in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Chapter eight is about drinks, alcoholic, non-alcoholic mm -hmm. drinks. Uh, chapter nine is about uh, teaching and sharing Taiwanese cuisine. And then chapter 10 is some recipes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an outline of yeah. the book. So there's lots of history in there. There's um, quite a bit of practical information about why certain things taste uh, mm -hmm. in a particular way. For example, if you go to 7-Eleven mm -hmm. and you have a tea egg, um, what does the broth that the tea egg is stewed in, what does it contain? Mm -hmm. And also, um, how you can improve on that. Some people say if you want to do it at home, add Coca-Cola. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So if you're interested, buy the book. I leave uh, links in the description where you can find the, the book. And we are now in Miaoli County. This is Hakka country. What do you think about Hakka food? Do you like it? Um, yes, I like it. And in my experience, Hakka food in Hacker districts is a lot better than hacker food in mm -hmm. other places. I've been to hacker restaurants in Taipei, Tainan, and the food is okay. But if you go to a you know a, a thoroughly hacker district like around here, mm -hmm. and you go to a local eatery, then the food tends to be much better. Mm -hmm. I guess the ingredients are fresh, more more authentic. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people say hacker food is oily and greasy and salty. Mm -hmm. Salty. And I think yeah. Maybe it is, um, but I disagree with the standard explanation. Uh, a lot of people say it's because hacker people had to work so hard. Mm -hmm. um, but I was never convinced by this because until recently all Taiwanese had to work very mm -hmm. hard. They had to work outdoors, they were sweating hard. So I think it's um, to do with in the mountain areas like this. Mm -hmm. um, it was more difficult to get certain fresh produce so things tended to be pickled or preserved in salt, mm -hmm. more so than in the mm -hmm. lowlands. We are going to have lunch later, maybe over there. Any food you, you're looking forward to, to eat um, today? Not, I don't have any specifically hacker things I like to eat, but uh, over the many years I've been in Taiwan, the two things I've really grown to love are pork and cabbage. Mm -hmm. You know, two things which in Britain we think of as quite mundane. Mm -hmm. And in, in the case of cabbage, we also think it's rather boring. Mm -hmm. But the way it's cooked in Taiwan, uh, it's really delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to eat the flat noodles, or the broad oh, yes. noodles. Yes. The rice, rice noodles. Yes. 
maybe some uh, steer fried meat. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, for rice noodles, it's it's interesting you mention that because uh, until kind of the 1950s, almost all the noodles in Taiwan were made of rice, mm -hmm. and it's only since then, with American influence and American trade, that we've had a lot of wheat noodles here in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So now most of the noodles are wheat noodles, mm -hmm. but that's quite a recent thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but ta the Taiwanese diet has changed hugely over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. We are in Miaoli County right now. How would you um, describe the, this place here? I would say if, if you're a tourist and you can survive in places where very little English is spoken, mm -hmm. you will find almost every part of the county interesting. There are some places like this which are already quite popular with tourists. There are other places, particularly along the coast, which are not well known, especially mm -hmm. to international tourists. But they're, I think they're quite special, very relaxing places if you want to do uh, slow travel or what they call here low has travel, uh, then I think Miaoli is a very good place to do that. Um, I think one thing I would point out is look at the blue sky today. It's now winter, mm -hmm. um, but in winter time in much of Taiwan, this is typical winter weather. Yeah. So really, if you're in Europe, Mm -hmm. or Japan or Korea and you want to get away from the cold mm -hmm. uh, for a few weeks or even a month or longer then Taiwan is a very good option November, December, January, mm -hmm. February. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you need a jacket yeah. and you may you may encounter some rain particularly in Taipei mm -hmm. uh, but the weather is very very comfortable mm -hmm. most of the time. And if it's raining and chilly in northern Taiwan you just go to the south and uh, like today it was raining in Taipei, when we started, we came down here and it's sunny weather, so... You can do that, and also there's lots of good museums in Taiwan, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things you can do indoors. So even if it's raining, you, you can mm -hmm. still have fun, I think, in mm -hmm. Taipei. That's my experience. Yeah. So take it from the expert, come to Taiwan and uh, have fun here. Or if you've been to Taiwan already, come back to Taiwan. Come back, <laughs> <laughs> or stay here forever. Mm -hmm.